what's up everybody welcome back to the channel doing something a little different today got some motorcycle wheels um, these are off of a buell these have actually already been chemically stripped even though kind of doesn't look like it there's some like white film that stayed on them where all the white was but that literally just blasts right off but these have already been stripped um, just going to go over with you guys real quick you have these machined areas uh, for bearings where bearings end up They're called bearing races um, you're going to want to make sure that you don't blast these um, you're not going to want to coat them either obviously um, but pressing bearings back in once an area has been blasted where it was machined sucks so make sure that you're going to you know i'm going to tape these off i'll show you guys real quick um, just electrical tape or silicone plugs whatever i'm actually going to tape the outside of this whole thing so it doesn't get blasted at all right there um, i'm going to get these in the cabinet and get going All right, now that we got these things chemically stripped, uh, outgasses and blasted them, um, got the masking removed from the machined areas that are gonna matter here. The next step is gonna be masking for powder. Um, now all motorcycle wheels are gonna be a little bit different, especially brand to brand, but they all have some pretty general things that you can tell you're gonna need to machine, or to mask off rather. Uh, machined areas, like I said, we're bearing, this is a bearing race, this is where the bearing for the wheel gets pressed into. All of these need to get masked off. Um, this wheel is kind of a strange, no, I wouldn't say exception, but it has some, some things that are a little bit different because I'm gonna tape off up here to block this machined area, which is effectively gonna block this area, but if I spray powder into here, it still has the ability to come through these holes, which is a problem, obviously. So you can do a couple different things. You can put plugs in them. And if you choose to go with plugs, you just want something that sits lower than your tape line that you're gonna put on. These particular plugs are ones that I found in the back of my oven. So they're a little haggard, but they will actually work quite well for this particular task. And as always, I'm using amber tape. As you guys know, I definitely prefer this tape over the green stuff, uh, even over the blue stuff. I you know I've had a couple people suggest the blue tape from me and uh, needless to say, I, I'm not a fan of the blue tape. Um, I actually hate it more than I hate green tape. So people ask me about this amber tape. The, it cuts a little different, but it's thinner. So it's actually easier to cut. The downside is you have to, like you just saw me there, you have to hold the edges of it when you're cutting it. It's not as rigid as the green tape, so it doesn't just come right off. But it sticks way better than the green tape, and you can, uh, it forms the contours much better than the green tape. Uh, that doesn't matter in this case, obviously. Since all we're doing is taping flat surfaces here, but I don't really carry the green tape either way, so it wasn't like me putting green tape on is even an option. <laughs> I think I do have some of it somewhere around here, but I usually just, just try to use it on completely flat surfaces that uh, I don't really care too much about. Mostly just trying to get rid of it. that grab a file here some of you guys have seen this trick in the past if you want to get a nice clean tape line but you're having a hard time cutting it you can just use a file on the very edge of this um, this little file sets one I think I th actually believe this one's from like Walmart or something this one was only like six bucks for a bunch of little mini files but I use them all the time I've been using them for years Okay, we're also gonna go around and mask all of these. Um, actually, I guess I can do that now because they don't have them on the other side. So I'm just gonna flip it over and do the other one of these, but no need to do that for right now. Let's see here. Get some more of this orange tape out. All 
Okay, so I masked this one off as you can see. I'm actually gonna mask this top piece as well. Um, this is off a of Buell. The, the brake setup is a little, di bit, little bit different on these um, than on other motorcycles. But I'm gonna mask these off. I'm gonna do this in time lapse and flip it over and do the other one, and then we'll get to the rear wheel. All right, now that we have the fronts done, we'll move on to the rear. Um, these ones are a little different, obviously, but generally the rule would be to, you know, depending on the manufacturer, these machined areas are four different things, whether it's a brake rotor sits on it, a drive pulley sits on it, um, you know, bearings obviously go inside the bearing races here. So you're gonna wanna mask these off always, um, no matter what. Um, if you have a customer, you know, who might tell you, oh, you don't need to mask part X, that could be true, um, and you can listen to them, that's fine. Uh, I tend to do everything that's a machined surface um, gets masked in this case. So I will uh, kick this over to time lapse. I'm going to mask the top of this and then do a piece around here to fold over to hold that in place. And then I'll be masking all of these on both sides. So let's get going to that. All right, gonna be spraying these in uh, Highland Bronze. Uh, gonna be using Gema Optiflex Pro. Um, I've had a bunch of people ask me about this particular gun and how well I like it. I have not used it enough to say that I love it, and there's a much better chance that I'll be sending it back than I will be keeping it. Um, I'm gonna get to that in another episode about how I ended up with it and all that, but um, gonna give it a whirl right now. Got Highland Bronze from uh, Highland Bronze from Prismatic load up in the box feed and. Uh, We'll start throwing powder at it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that how-to. Got another couple how-tos coming over the next few days. Um, 
If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, make sure you do that. We're getting super close to 3,000 subscribers, which is uh, roughly 3,000 more than I ever thought I would have on this channel. So uh, big thanks to all you guys who are already subscribed. If you're not, be sure to hit that button and turn on notifications. Give this video a like and uh, look forward to the next video. By now, you should have at least blown. It's funny, I'm mad famous for being.